today's webinar, design engineers are looking for low power solutions to extend battery life with accurate measurement and reduce product footprint. This webinar will discuss how ADI addresses these design challenges and how design engineers can use a combination of analog front end signal conditioning and interface solutions to design low power, high precision and high performance systems. Here to present from ADI are uh, Paulina Pan and Mohamed Kazi. Welcome to today's webinar. In this webinar, we will cover how to design low power sensor solution and interfaces. My name is Paulina Pan from Legacy Maxim, now ADI Analog Devices, located at San Jose. Together with me here today is Mohamed Kazi, who is our applications manager. Here's our agenda. I will start with the introduction to sensors and applications and the design challenges. After that, Mohammed will cover sensors and signal chain solutions and comma interfaces, indus comma industrial interfaces. Resources for design engineers followed by Q&A session at the end. As the title calls out, sensors are everywhere and it is growing very fast. 45 trillions of sensors is forecasted in 2032. It is a big market. The sensors are across all applications. We have seen tractions and design wins for our products from consumer wearable to medical to IoT and industrial applications listed on this slide. What are common signal chain design challenges in the sensor solution? Low power to extend a battery life achieve accurate measurement, board sizes constrained and challenging with the amount of data to be processed. We have solutions to all these challenges. Our solution is leading in low power with one volt technology, high precision, small size WLP package and bandwidth for data acquisition. Now I'm going to hand it this to Mohammed to dive into some of the applications and solutions. Hello everyone. It is great to see you all joining from different parts of the globe. As Polina mentioned that sensors are everywhere and they are part of almost every application and they are one of the most important building blocks of modern technology. There are many types of sensors available in the market. We have picked some of them including temperature, electrochemical, uh, strain gauges or load cells and pressure sensors. Our primary product strategy has been to provide low power signal conditioning solutions for sensors to maximize battery size, battery life, and game changing power savings. At the analog devices, we aim to invest in our IP so that we can combine various building blocks for combinatorial innovation and solve system level problems. In this, in this webinar, our focus will be industrial automation and therefore, some interfaces like RS-485, serial extenders, 4 to 20, uh, 20, 4 to 20 milliamp in loop transmitters uh, will be discussed. All these interfaces are part of industrial connectivity solution and are very much needed for long distance communication with the host for control and automation purposes. Let's move on to sensor and their signal chain solutions. For temperature sensors, we have big RTD and thermocouple sensors, as these sensors are found in numerous applications in our day-to-day -day life. Some common applications include HVACs, um, household appliances, and they are found in numerous industrial and automotive applications. Since RTD is a variable resistance-based sensor, it requires excitation current to measure the change in voltage and it can behave as a ratio metric. Whereas thermocouples inherently generates a small voltage um, and based on the temperature, uh, based on the ambient temperature or the sensing temperature. These sensors require clean signal amplification before A to B conversion. And in some cases, noise ejection is very important. Now we will discuss the analog front end solutions for these temperature sensors from analog devices. As I mentioned earlier, 
RTD is a resistance-based temperature sensor. It generally comes in 100 ohms to 1 kilo ohm resistance uh, at 0 degrees Celsius. And these sensors are used uh, for wider range of temperature sensing where silicon sensors are, no, are not viable. Um, typical sensing range is minus 100 to 350 degrees C. And the RTD sensors, um, they can be connected in a bridge configuration with an excitation voltage. And a bias resistor can also be added to offset the output voltage. The small change in resistance create a small potential difference, which can be uh, which can be measured and or amplified with an amplifier. In this case, a programmable gain amplifier. Filters can be applied to remove the environmental noise on the signal before processing, as the sensor's wire can behave like an antenna and can pick up unwanted signal. In this case, we have used MAX 11214 along with MAX 6018A, which is our micropower precision reference. MAX 11214 is a 24-bit Sigma Delta ADC integrated with a low noise PGA and programmable digital filters. The data is collected and processed by the MAX 32655 MCU which is a low power ARM Cortex M4 MCU and transferred to the host controller or PLC via RS485, or Roni milliamp or wireless interfaces like Wi-Fi, ZigBee, et cetera. Some of these interfaces will be discussed later. For thermocouples, we do not need a resistive bridge as the sensor generates a small voltage signal proportional to the temperature. Usually thermocouples are used for a very high temperature sensing range from minus 270 degree to 1800 degrees Celsius. Thermocouple output can also be amplified through the PGA and signal is fed to an A to D converter. Filters would be necessary to remove environmental noise. These sensors also require coal junction composition where the metal wires are terminated on the PCB. Therefore, a one-wire temperature sensor like DS18B20 can be used for cold junction compensation. The data can be collected by the MCU corresponding and corresponding temperature is determined from the thermocouple reference table and sent to the host controller or PLC. As we have seen, MAX11214 is a perfect device for temperature sensor applications. It has the lowest power for comparable SNR to increase battery life, and it has a 21-bit noise-free resolution for quality signal conditioning. It is integrated with PGA and digital filters, and it is good for reduction, bomb reduction, and size reduction on your PCB. And high input impedance makes it perfect for bridge applications. For multiple sensors, we recommend using MAX11410, which is also a low-power multi-channel 24-bit Sigma Delta ADC. It allows up to eight single-ended of four differential inputs and has a simultaneous 50-60 hertz rejection on all the channels. It has similar signal chain integrated on the chip along with an analog multiplexer and would be a perfect fit for multi-sensor applications. Let's move to electrochemical sensors. These sensors are widely used in industrial and medical applications, but also being adapted into intelligent infrastructure domain through IoT, et cetera. One of the most important design challenge is to keep these sensors biased all the time because of their long warm-up and long stability time. Therefore, reducing power is essential for longer battery life. And by the way, these sensors are mostly used for environmental sensing. For our case, we have taken ethanol sensor example to discuss the signal conditioning solution available for these sensors. These sensors typically have a liquid electrolyte and a catalytic metal electrodes 
designed for the target gas. These electrodes are biased with a potential difference to polarize the uh, electron electro electrolytic liquid inside. Some sensors have long warm-up time, but once it is stabilized, it generates a current proportional to the volumetric function of the gas. Our signal chain solution for these sensors is designed using two MAX 40108 op amps, which are industry's lowest supply voltage, high precision amplifiers. The signal chain is powered through a 1.5 volt battery and always remains active to keep the sensor stabilized. MCU is time to MCU is time to activate only for measurements. This saves tremendous amount of power. By the way, we have a working demo for the sensor and the video and app node will be updated soon on analog website. This slide shows the power reduction through MAX 40108 using a 1.5 volt battery compared to a legacy 1.8 volt op amp. The red shows the system in standby and the current in uh, for the legacy op amp in a standby mode on the left side and on the right side it shows the current used by the same op amp with active mode uh, in active mode bit with 0.1% of duty cycle and the reduction is about 40% or more here are some benefits and features of max 40108 it is a low power operation it only requires 0.9 volts and can go up to 3.6 volts on supply. It has a very small supply current, 25.5 microvolts, microamps, and has a one microvolt of input offset voltage. It also features a shutdown mode, which is perfect for IoT applications. Now we will discuss about the strain gauges or load cells and sometimes also go, call as V scales, depending on the application. These sensors are also widely used in industrial and automotive applications, as well as current commercial applications, such as electronic power calculators in workout equipment or power terminals in, in, um, in the stores for weight measurements, weight measurements. These sensors are mostly resistive type and are measured in bridge configurations, and they are ratiometric in nature. Sensor calibration is a little tricky sometimes if the signal chain components are not carefully chosen. Input noise and EMI interference are also cause of signal distortion. Here's a proven signal conditioning solution used in a bicycle power meter demo created by our team. The app node will be published soon on analog devices website and we already have a video which is published and the link will be in the sources section. The signal chain utilizes MAX41400 which is a low power precision instrumentation amplifier with programmable gain option. This instrumentation amplifier is an ideal device for strain gauge application with very high input impedance and built-in EMI filters. It also uh, utilizes chopper stabilization so to zero out any drift in the offset voltage and eliminates 1 over F noise, which is typically found in CMOS amplifiers. The output of the in-amp is a single-ended amplified voltage signal, which is sampled with a 12-bit SAR ADC, max 11108, and processed by a BLE SOC, max 32666. Here are some of the benefits for MAX 41400. It enables the usage of SAR ADC and extends battery life approximately by 75%. It is a low power device with an active current of only 65 microamps and comes with a shutdown option. The built in EMI filters. Um, auto zero feature and programmable gain option reduces system size and bomb cost.
Finally, we will discuss about pressure sensors before we jump to interfaces. These are different, there are different types of pressure sensors. Most common are capacitive and resistive type. Today, we will focus on resistive type industrial sensors and its signal chain solutions. These sensors are designed for either absolute pressure or different, uh, differential pressure sensing applications. And sensor calibration and temperature compensation is very important as a sensor output is linear in nature, but varies within, with the with change in ambient temperature. Low power consumption of the sensor plus signal chain is also an important aspect of the design, especially if you're using uh, industrial photocode media loop transmitters, or if you're designing uh, photocode media loop transmitters. Generally, the signal chain uses a Wheatstone bridge resistive configuration to measure the signal from the pressure sensor. Since Wheatstone bridge is ratiometric in nature, the signal chain components must be chosen carefully. Otherwise, any variation or noise in the excitation voltage or ADC reference will affect the sensor output. A low noise amplifier is required to amplify the signal for high precision A to D converter. Gain and offset calibration is needed for each sensor. Another temperature sensor such as thermistor would be required for temperature compensation. Once the calibrated output is generated, it can be sent to a control unit through video uh, through various interfaces, including photoroni milliamps, RS-485, or wireless. For this application, we recommend using MAX40109. This device has all the required peripherals to design an industrial pressure sensor transmitter. This device has built-in gain and offset calibration um, as well as calibration memory, which is MTP, multiple time programmable memory, to store the factory calibration information. MAX 40109 can eliminate the need of an MCU if 420 milliamp output is desired, as the built in control logic can read the data from ADC and translate it into current output using DAC and the op amp based driver. It is integrated with a low noise PGA and a 16-bit ADC for the sensor front end. MAX40109 is a highly integrated solution for pressure sensors. It is an ideal design for current output used use in industrial applications such as for Rooney milliamp loop transmitters. The VDD-HV supply voltage range is 3 to 36 volts which is easy to connect with PLC and it internally generates core voltage for analog and digital functions using the 5 volt and 1.8 volts LDOs. This device comes in a small package for uh, space constraint applications. Uh, the 4x4 four four, um, TQFN is a 16-bit TQFN package and then the 2.5 by 2.5 approximately um, is a 16-pin uh, WLP package. It offers um, the 13-bit noise-free resolution for ADC, and it comes with calibration memory and offset and sensitivity calibration. It also comes with an external temperature sensor capability for temperature compensation. And the FSR can be adjusted uh, depending on the application. Hence, this device um, saves over the space and bomb cost, and will be available soon. Now let's move to common industrial communication interfaces. No discussion on today's factory connectivity would be complete without mentioning the RS-485 and RS-422 interface. Despite uh, 40 Eight years old, RS-485 continues to be ubiquitous in the factory environment. Much of the success of RS-485 can be attributed to its flexibility. The TIA-EIA-485 standard from 1983 defines only the physical layer. Full communication protocols leveraging RS-485 such as Profibus for industrial processing, Modbus and BACnet for building control and various interfaces for positional, uh, positional control within motor 
are available. Some advantages include point-to-point, -point, multi drop and multi-point in various topologies with up to 256 nodes on a network, a reach of over one kilometer and up to 100 kbps. Advances in transceivers such as equalization and extended BOD improves on this conservative estimates. Robustness due to the wide common mode range and inbuilt ESD protection found in today's RS-485 transceivers. And simplicity as RS-485 can be used with existing processor UART's low cost microcontroller can be used without an additional digital controller required to implement the communication stack with other interfaces. A second consideration on the survival of RS-485 has been the improvements in transceiver offering over the years, of which ADI and Maxim have been key drivers. With the combination of ADI and Maxim RS-485 technology, ADI has the most complete offering for all RS-485 needs in today's and tomorrow's factory. The latest transceivers from ADI push the boundary in terms of speed, while legacy transceivers struggle at data rates above like 30 Mbps. ADI solutions include data rates up to 100 Mbps and pre-emphasis to extend cable length. These transceivers can communicate faster and further than previous products. With fault protection on the bus pins, these devices can withstand 80 volts without damage or latch up, allowing operation in extreme environments and even with standing misfires to 24 volts power supplies. Integrated ESD, EFT, and surge protection boosts reliability and allows removal of external protection components. Some feature set improvements include auto direction and polarity inversion and selectable speed with termination. And ADI has the market's most comprehensive portfolio of isolated RS-45 transceivers, leveraging digital isolation to provide safe connectivity for industrial applications. The best RS-485 solutions include Max22500 family of transceivers, which comes with pre-emphasis. Pre-emphasis allows faster data rates over longer cables Pre-emphasis also enables lower cost cables. Max data rate of 100 Mbps can be achieved and pre-emphasis can be adjusted on Max 22500E and Max 22502E. Some of the applications include absolute encoders, motion controllers, and industrial control systems. Max 22510 and N11 is another fully isolated transceiver family. It isolates data as well as power using an integrated isolated DC-DC converter. It's a much more convenient solution as everything needed is on a single package, including power. It comes with 2.5 kilovolt RMS isolation and up to 35 kilovolt ESD protection. Now let's move to serial extenders. The serial extender solution from ADI are designed to simplify the interface with sensors having digital outputs on I2C or SPI. In a conventional solution, we would need a microcontroller to read the data from these sensors over I2C or SPI um, and then transfer the data through control, to control unit through RS485 interface for long distance communication. It also requires a code uh, driver um, to interface with the sensor. Serial extenders basically provide a, a transparent and robust connection between an ISPI or I2C sensor without needing any firmware on the node, on the sensor node, and uh, it also reduces the number of components, hence lower bomb cost, and making sensor nodes simpler, which means it would reduce design cycle time. LTC4331 is an I2C peripheral device, uh, which is an extender over a rugged differential link. This device offer up to one point, offers up to 1.2 kilometers of distance for communication and had a, has a 60 volt fault protection. It has I2C address sharing for the slave nodes, and it also has the SM bus alert and control. So basically, this device can provide an interrupt to the MCU host 
from the sensor modes. The, the 15 plus minus 15 mode, common mode range is also very good for the sensors. The supply offers 1.62 volts to 5.5 volts for IO levels and 3 volts to 5.5 volts for digital supply. And the package size is 4 by 5 mm uh, QFM. The LTC4332 is a SPI extender over rugged differential link. And this device also offers 1.2 kilometer distance and has a 60 volt protection. It provides up to three peripheral devices on the SPI link um, and the SPI configuration is available. The SPI clock rate is two megahertz for these slaves. And the SPI mode configuration is also possible. The interrupt is available for the host as needed. The 1.62 volt power supply, uh, 1.62 to 5 volt range for the IO levels make it suit make these devices suitable for one point uh, for all the sensors which allows data communication from 1.8 volts up to 5 volts, and 3 volt to 5.5 volt supply levels. Uh, are generally used in industrial applications. The package size for this device is also 4 by 5 mm and comes in a QFN. Okay, so this slide will conclude our presentation, but I want to reiterate that when designing low power sensor solution, the consideration for low power and high precision analog and digital devices is a key. Sometimes a smaller size is also very important. And ADI solutions solve the toughest design challenges and have proven expertise for your design needs. Here are some resources available with Maximally Geared and uh, from Maximally Geared and Analog Devices website related to precision low power. And this is the video link for the bicycle power meter demo which provides more detail on the strain gauge AFE solution with MAX41400. The Monterey subsystem reference design provides more detail info on 4 to 20 milliamp loop transmitters. And MAX Rev-75 hash is a good for is a good application node for load cell applications. Thank you so much for attending and let's open the floor for questions and answers. Okay, um, we're back and uh, we're gonna dive into the Q&A portion of the presentation. Um, with me is Mohammed and Paulina Pan. Um, first uh, question we have is, um, do you know if the low voltage op amp is available in single or dual configuration? So, hi Tariq and hi everyone. Again, um, yeah, so we have we do not have exactly the same op amp available, uh, which, which 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 can go up to 0.9 volts, uh, or operation. But we have max 4002 available in a dual package, and that op amp is also low power. It can uh, operate from 1.6 volts to uh, 3.6, I believe, and um, that can be utilized um, in in such applications. Uh, next question is, what are the gain options for max 41400 in amp? Okay, so we have eight gain options available, um, and we have the slide, uh, you know, I think it is mentioned in the slide deck as well. So it is from 10 volts per volt to 250 volts per volt, and eight options. So I believe they are from 10 volts per volt, then 20, and then 50, 100, 150, and 200. And then 250, something like that. Yeah. Okay. And uh, when is the availability of the uh, Max 40109? So I'll, I'll take this question. Oh, okay. I'll take this. I'll take this question. So the 40109 sample will be available January 2023. Okay. Um, next question is from Michael. Uh, does input matrix of Max? 11410 influence signal noise in comparison with 
ADCs without input matrix and directly connected inputs to the ADC like max 11214 or other maxim ADCs. So the input matrix, um, yes, it is designed for the for the performance, um, as as mentioned in the data sheet. It is a very low resistance um, in, input multiplexer, and the PGA is very low noise, so it should not affect any um, output. You know, um, any it should not affect any or create any noise on the signal, input signal, and and the output should be as lean as as mentioned in the data sheet. Uh, what's the uh, typical warm-up time of an electrochemical uh, sensor? So we have seen um, some sensors, their warm-up time and stabilization time ranges from three to four hours sometimes. And some of them are less than an hour also. It depends on the, the manufacturer and their process and their um, you know electrochemical fluid inside the sensor. And so, yeah. Um, there's a member that uh, had a sample kit of Maxim chips that he used for his students, um, and he wants to know, in general, is there a place where our community members can get uh, samples, um, from, uh, such as the Maxim storefront? Um, do you guys know anything about that? Sample kits? Sample kits for ADI project. Uh, yeah. And, and do you know any, any information about sample kits uh, for people interested in um, exploring your sensor technology? Paulina, do you know? Yeah. So I think that they can either reach out, I think DigiKey or, you know, by you guys in Fanao that you are carrying some of our, um, so our uh, EV kit. And also they can reach out to our distributor. Also on our website, I think that there is a place where you can order sample. Okay. Um, okay somebody uh, is uh, discussing an automated tray project that they're working on. Um, currently the motor with encoder is not giving accurate value when the load is provided. Um, can you, uh, and he's interested in knowing more about the effects of load on max 22500's encoder. So max 22500 encoder should not have any issues with the load unless the load is distorting the power supply of the max 22500. If the power supply is going below, for example, operating voltage or has a very big transients in it, then it may be possible that the output is getting uh, distorted. But otherwise, uh, so you, you have to take care of your power. Um, I think otherwise, uh, the device itself inherently doesn't have any issues with the uh, distortion on the, with the load. Okay. Uh, can max 2250 be used for extending range of 10 slash 100 megabit Ethernet with proper conversion. Uh, I'm not sure about this one because we have other uh, solutions available for industrial Ethernet, um, and I'm not sure. Yeah, for for these devices, if they can be converted with for the extended range, I can look into it and maybe we can you know uh, have some uh, question. Uh, I mean, some answers updated on with the webinar. Later on, um, Carlo would like to know: Is it possible to use low power sensors in places with great EMI levels? Yeah, it is certainly possible. We have solutions available, as we have mentioned. Like Max Four One Four Zero Zero is an instrumentation amplifier designed for many, you know, uh, sensor applications, um, and this type of amplifier has a built-in EMI filters inside. Um, so it gives you flexibility. It gives you low cost uh, option uh, for your ADCs. Basically, you don't. Sometimes in in some applications, you don't need a 24-bit sigma delta in front of uh, these uh, instrumentation amplifiers because they are so good. 
in terms of uh, performance they reduce uh, all the input noise and uh, they also have the zero uh, you know drift feature so you can sometimes if your mcu allows or has a built-in 12-bit adc you can even use those um, adcs for low cost uh, options okay uh Kart karthik wants to know is rtd sensor solutions available with adc internal reference option uh, there are some, yes, there are some available. Um, there are some parts which has the uh, built-in uh, references as well. Um, for example, um, I think within Max 11200 series, we have one. I, I kind of forget the name or the number, but there are some parts which uh, like Max uh, 11200, then 210, 208, and we, the one we are... Uh, um, uh, we, we, sh we showed in our slides was max 11214 so some of the parts actually has pga built in and then some have uh, i believe some has internal reference as well but external reference is usually good because when you are designing your rtd uh, and your excitation voltage and everything uh, it is better to have you know the same reference going into the adc so whatever noise is coming in it can get rejected as well so that's why external um, reference option is better. Okay, uh, next question is, is it possible to power a wearable device with low power sensors using movement as an energy source? So it, it has been, uh, the some effort has been going on on this front and um, we some people have been using, you know, uh, piezo type uh, material for uh, harvesting energy from the through the vibration and i think maxim also has some energy harvesting solutions available uh, which can harvest uh, energy from either vibration or from small solar cells or from um, uh, the electromagnetic uh, you know uh, energy available in the environment so I don't uh, recall the part numbers on top of my head, but yes, definitely there are some solutions available and Max Import. Okay, uh, we got a question about uh, Max product codes. Um, is there uh, any uh, system that you guys use for Max part numbering or just a random number selected for every new part? Alina, can you answer that one, please? Yeah, we said that I don't know if it's a numeric num uh, uh, the number that is in question or the package call. If you are talking about the suffix after the number, yes, there is a naming convention on our website. I think that the first letter is going to be the uh, the temp grade, and then followed by the package call, and then the number of pins. Uh, those are the typical three, and then, and then the T and T at the end is just for tap and reel, and plus for the left free. But it, the, the naming convention is on the website. Um, before we close out, uh, do any of you guys have any uh, last words before we uh, before we uh, end this presentation? I would say we have a lot of you know reference designs available online on our uh, Maxim web page, as well as some on uh, Unlock the uh, Unlock web page, and if if there is any. A specific need definitely we can be reached out and we will uh, try to help out uh, you know as much as we can all right uh can i uh, sneak one more question in um what adc and op amp would you recommend for using with force sensitive resistor okay so it depends on uh, what sort of uh, ADC you like to use. For example, if you want to use a SAR ADC, then MAX41400 is a good instrumentation amplifier um, for this purpose. But if you would like to use uh, a PGA and uh, Sigma Delta ADC 24-bit, then MAX11214 is a, is a good option for uh, four sensors, resistive type. So because usually those sensors are also connected in, in bridge configuration. So, yeah, you can use them. Okay. I, I'd like to thank uh, Mohammed and Paulina for an excellent presentation. And I'd like to thank uh, you and the audience for taking time from your busy day.
to come join us for this uh, presentation. Hope you found it useful. And uh, we, uh, we hope to see you uh, again in more, uh, more upcoming webinars. Thank you and so long for today. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you everybody.